great. Cool. Okay, so so basically, you you the TLDR is you would like to deploy a token, and you're not really a coder, but not in the slightest. You understand uh, kind of what ERC twenties are. You understand, yeah, you understand the concepts, but getting in and writing whether this mm -hmm. method is public or private is like no, thank you. That's exactly right. okay. Cool. And, and you've tried cool. Remix and Remix was able to, you were able to, with some handholding, basically mm -hmm. deploy, a, like compile and deploy a contract to mainnet? Yes. Did you yeah. pay the gas? Well, how much did yeah, the we, gas cost? Uh, <laughs> uh, it cost, I think, 11 to $15 or something. Okay. Or yep. maybe it's, it might have it been like $20, actually. It, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't Depending cheap on how exotic your ERC-20 gets, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. it can be more and more code, which means mm -hmm. more and more stuff gets pushed on chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you, uh, you've tried some, basically there, there are some websites out there that kind of do this for you, but the goal mm -hmm. is like, wouldn't it be cool if I had my own like kind right. of tinker stack, right? right. Like something mm -hmm. locally that I could poke at. And that's exactly. what... I, so that's what I'm doing with scaffold ETH. It's not, it's not actually like a product itself. I'm not really building much of a product. I'm just taking everybody else's products that are good, putting them together mm -hmm. and then kind of putting a tutorial and try to make it digestive, mm -hmm. digestible. So mm -hmm. uh, let me, let's see. Uh, what's the best way to do this? Let me send you a link. Uh, do you mind screen sharing? Would that yeah, be yeah, like right. maybe you yeah. drive, you mm -hmm. drive, drive first. And then if we run into problems, maybe I can drive after that. Okay. okay, so we're going to go to this branch right here. Let's see. What's what's the best chat we have? And probably in it? Zoom. And do it in okay. Zoom. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is one of those websites that you were looking at. We we won't even use mm -hmm. ETHBuild. Let me just send you. I mean, we could we could use ETHBuild, but it'll be very much like Remix, where you have like this browser thing that's giving you bytecode and Okay. Uh, I actually have a compiler that's on a server, so it's even worse than Remix probably. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think Remix has its own JS environment built in. But okay, so if you go here, now if you scroll down, I've updated the readme for just this. So see that Git mm -hmm. clone? So first of all, do you even have Git? You probably don't have Git installed on your machine, do you? Can you I don't like think so. pull up a terminal? Maybe that's our first start. Can we pull up a terminal? Yeah. All right, and then if you just type Git, what do we, like G-I-T, okay. Uh, did you hit install? Nice. All right, Mac. Okay. Okay. We're off to the races here. I have another tutorial that has the links to the other things that we'll need to download. So, so the, I, I will give you the disclaimer. There will be some handholding in getting this installed, right? right like getting, get, getting yarn. It'll be a one-time thing. So then it'll be set up. So you can come into this folder anytime you can change your contract and you can say yarn run deploy, right? And it'll fire mm -hmm. it off and everything will happen locally. And then you can just kind of like point that thing instead of at yours, you can point it at mainnet. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you do a yarn run deploy and the thing goes to the mainnet and costs you $15. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, depending on how long this takes, Asia might go to bed and, uh, and it'll only cost $10. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I, I think like, I, I don't watch it that close, but every once in a while I'll look up and it'll be cheap and it'll be around 5 p.m. my yep. time. So it'd be yep, about 4 about p.m. Right. your time. That's exactly right. Is that when Asia goes that's, to sleep? Is that what yeah, it is? That's, <laughs> that's been the pattern for the last like two weeks. It's like in the morning, yeah. it's like 70, 80, 90 plus, And then it teeters off until around 4 or 5 p.m. And then when, by the time I go to bed, it's back up to like 90. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I put a link link in there and that's like to another tutorial, but it'll have the, um, the links we need for the other things we need to install. So uh, from that command line where you typed Git and it started mm -hmm. installing, try typing node just real quick, N-O-D-E. Oh yeah, I installed you that. Do. Last you night. have Node twelve, dope. Install, All right, so we have, so we're getting Git Node twelve. So the last thing would be yarn. Uh, I don't have yarn. Okay. Okay. Let me send you a link. So the the second link I posted there is a tutorial, and the third link is a link from that tutorial. But if mm -hmm. you just click that third link in chat, it should be the yarn uh, installation commands. There we go. Yep. And so Yarn is, is our, do you know what NPM is? Probably not. NPM is like a package manager for Node. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have Node, 
where you're like writing JavaScript to build things. And then you have NPM, which is like bringing in all these really cool packages. Cause it's cool because like all this open source extensibility, you can pull in everybody else's stuff really easily. Right. I, I was Yarn, doing a little bit of that yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yarn is a little bit better than, than NPM. It's basically like a drop-in replacement, kind of like the good versus great kind of thing. Okay. Do I want, do I want to paste this into the terminal? Yeah. yeah let's see what, well, let's see. I think there's probably like, you could just install it. Let me, I mean, try, try brew install yarn. Do you have brew? I do not. Let's see what happens here. Okay. It didn't like that. Uh, I would say the installation script. It's about the third one down where it looks like it's a curl command. Yeah. Put that into your terminal. What that is, is it's going to go out to a website and send it to bash. Didn't like uh -oh. it. It didn't like that either. Okay, let's see. What else do we have? Not, we don't want to manually install. Oh, how about npm? Uh, just type npm install uh, yarn dash g. So let's just try to globally, uh, uh, space, sorry. The, you need a space. Yeah, there you go, dash g. There we go. Try that. Do I no global, just g? Yeah, just g. Let's try it. If I hit enter, will it? Yeah, just hit enter. Let's see what happens. No, it didn't do it. Let's see. Oh, man. I don't even know what that is. Oh, right. man. The developer stumped. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're in like a terminal. So I have like iTerm. So I've like the first thing I do when I install, uh, like get a new computer is like a couple of these things that we're doing right now. And I just can't remember exactly. Right, because right, you only do it once. Yes, exactly. This stuff is, well, I'll install, I'll, I install different versions of Node all the time because Node is weird, but mm -hmm. how about, well, we could install Homebrew, but man, I thought there was like a, so if you click stable. Stable. I, uh, yeah, I thought there, uh, no, 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 sorry. I thought there was like a, I just clicked this and installed it, but maybe I think I did the, the curl thing and curl wasn't working. Wow, we can't get stuck on yarn. This, this is, okay, let's do, let's do Mac install homebrew. Let's just get homebrew on your machine too. And then you'll be able to do a brew uh, install. Okay. So okay. Uh, let me send you, so it's brew.sh is really good for installing things on Macs. Oh wait, that's not, okay. That's okay, it, cool. that's it, yep. yep, yep. And then there's probably that install line. See if that install line works. This guy? Uh, nope, nope, up, up. Uh, that oh, big long one, that one right there. Yeah, try putting that into your terminal. Nope. Dang it. Okay, so wait, what? So the Mac terminal, let's see. What are we missing here? The Mac terminal isn't liking, maybe we should go get iTerm too. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going through the gamut of becoming okay. Let's try, let's try this. Okay, let's try iTerm two first. So that's going to be a new terminal. Try downloading that. Big download button. Yep, yep. I might even add this to this. This may be. I'm keeping some notes here. This may be good for my explanation when I have a beginner's guide. That this needs nice. to probably be nice. Did it download? Uh, opening in 10 seconds, yeah. All right. You're going to be a pro developer by the end of this. You're going to have the full <laughs> staff. Yeah, I think, I think you wanted to do all that. There we go. Sure. Uh, sure. Okay, so now we have a little bit better terminal. I okay. bet we can go back. I bet we don't even have to do the brew install. I bet we could go back to that yarn um, tab. So not even that one, but that one. And that curl command up there that we got the first error from. So if we scroll up, uh, brew won't work, but the, let me see what it was called. The, I think it was the third command. Yeah, that one. Try pasting that one into iTerm and see if iTerm likes that better. Yeah. Mm, all right, all right. All right. Okay. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna add iTerm two to my uh like my requirements for doing the tutorial. Cool. I didn't know that the Mac terminal would do that. Okay. And and also an, another key thing is we just ran git in the terminal and it was like, oh, you want to install that? And just installed it for us right. too, right? right? So if you right. if you type git here or even yeah, yeah, in that one. Git. Yep. 
Yes. Okay. So we have a version of Git. Uh, if you type yarn. Nope. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I think maybe there's a second command there. Uh, this one? Oh, no, it's not. It's That was like the version. Okay. That should have installed yarn just now. Uh, let me see. Let me go look at the yarn page. Okay. So we, you did the curl. What the heck? You did the curl bash. It looked like it installed, right? Did we get an error mm -hmm. at the end of that? Nope. It says successfully installed yarn 1.22.4. Oh. Please open another terminal where yarn. Oh, oh yeah. You may allowed. have to close. Okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. Close, Maybe it close that thing. guy. Yeah. Close that guy. Close up, close up your other terminal. If you're done with that one too. Okay. Terminate. Sure. I don't yeah. know why they okay. would, it's not running anything. I don't think, uh, we've already got Git installed. Yeah. So yeah. So you want I term two, that's going to be your new handy. You could keep that guy in the dock. Even if you're, you want to look like a programmer. <laughs> okay. So now. Oh, okay. Wait, what's going on there? Uh, I got, no, I, I think got... it's already installed. I think you can just type oh, yarn. Okay. Yeah. What's going on uh, there? Though? I think I accidentally. Ca there we go. Maybe even bad. yarn. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Okay. So we've got yarn. We've got Git. We've got, what else do we need? Do we, and we've got node, right? So we should have everything we need now to get started. Okay. And mm -hmm. I think you're in your home folder, like the little squiggly. So mm -hmm. yeah. So let's go back to that link I sent you originally where the, the, the very first tab there, the GitHub repo. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is clone, see that, that very first command. Yep. Copy and paste that and paste it in. Can and I make let's this see what happens live, here. Live on the front. Um, Oh, like float on top? Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I don't know. I think that's a that's a heavy nope. ask. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Paste. Yeah. Yep. Enter. And enter. Yep. And so what that is doing is using Git to go get my source code. And okay. now with Git, you can it it does open source version control. So it keeps track of you can make a small change and you can commit it to your stuff. I can make a small change, I can mm -hmm. commit it, mm -hmm. and we can have those things kind of merging. Mm -hmm. um, we we each keep a local copy of the code, basically. Okay. So now you have a copy of the code. So now if you CD in there, so CD changes directory. You do mm -hmm. a CD into your token sandbox, which is the the folder we just created. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and paste that in and go. Yep. And then do a, uh, just do that next command to just paste them in. <laughs> oh, one by one all the way down. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll go through it. We may have some problems, but okay. yeah. So now you've checked out my code. Oh wait, no, no, no. We don't want token sandbox. I told you the wrong thing. That should be token dev. So just hit okay. up and it'll bring up that command again. Hit, okay. Hold on. Yeah. There. Yeah. Oh, hit up. Okay. there it is. Yeah. But instead it's of token, token sandbox, we want token dash dev. Or token space dev, yeah, yep. Token space dev. Wait, wait, space no, it's dash. dash. It's dash. It's dash. definitely a dash. If there was a dash there, leave the dash there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't see it. There we okay. go. Yep. Let's see. Okay, now we switch to that branch. Now do a yarn install. This is the one that'll take a time, take some time, and might give us some problems. Okay, so while this is going, we should go look up kind of like what the minimum viable spec is for an ERC-20. Okay. So if we, wanted, if we wanted to build one, we could build one basically by, by hand, like by mm -hmm. scratch, like let's bring in a balance function, mm -hmm. let's bring in that stuff. Yep. And I think eventually we carve all that out and just bring in Open Zeppelin and say, thank you Open Zeppelin for bringing, you know, having audited stuff. But right. we, we maybe should build our own token just okay. to play Define. around with. Right. Yep. So let's go, yeah, let's go see what the ERC, 20. I mean, it's, it's a standard, but I don't want to, I mean, the standard would be gross. I want to see like an, a minimum viable token. I'm sure someone right. has made one. Searching minimum viable exchange. I see one of my medium articles. <laughs> That's a trip to be like searching for some problem and get in there and either A, like find junk from yourself or right. B, see something from like one of the OGs, like way back in the day on mm -hmm. Stack Exchange, mm -hmm. like, oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this, I think, here's a good article we could start with probably. Just from like one quick Google finds me this Medium article, which 
it has a lot of steps that we don't want, but I think it has the solidity that we do want if we wanted to just build our own fake token first to play around with. Oh, here it uh, is. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See that, 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 yeah, that definition is pretty good, but even down below that there's like a, a hero token is what they called it. It looks like, I don't know. I've never seen this before, but it has the mapping for the balances. It has a constructor that will change. But yeah, basically those two those two things. I think we can okay. we can use. Okay, so are we done installing? How did it, how did it go? Just that's then? good. That's good. It looks like that's an error, right? That that no jip thing is like actually uh, a distraction. <laughs> it okay. tried to recompile a thing and failed, but doesn't need to in the first place. Okay. I think thankfully <laughs> I've I've heard that the Biddler guys may have just carved that out of the dependencies or something, which would be so amazing. Those guys are doing great stuff. But uh, the next step is a yarn start. And so, so what we have is not just Biddler. And so basically I should have started with that. Biddler is sort of like the compiler that we're gonna be using. Mm -hmm. You should yeah, say okay to that probably. The, the compiler we're using that'll compile the contract, but we're also using from Paul Berg, we're using create ETH app. So it has kind of both of those things in there and it compiles a contract over here, but then injects it into the app. So mm -hmm. we'll have kind of a front end and a back end. And the back end okay. will be our smart contract and the front end will be a nice little React app. Now, right. it will, the point is we're not gonna do a ton of programming here, but all this <laughs> scaffolding will come up for us and we'll be able to poke at things without hopefully having to do a lot of programming. Okay, so your, your front end is coming up, but we need to bring up a back end. So mm -hmm. if you hit uh, open Apple in, I think, command in on that I term, we can get another one. Awesome. And you'll want to CD into whatever that folder is that we're in there. Uh, CD. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. Smart something. How do I find out? Yeah. I hit tab. You just type smart and hit tab. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, gonna be a oh smart. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Smart See tab. what uh that wasn't it's, what it it's is. giving what me that, that uh, apple what are, your sound. token sandbox maybe type your try, yeah try your yeah, oh, yeah that's smart? it yeah no no no. just do cd space take out the smart your and then tab and it'll auto complete for you no oh your uh yeah. with the dash or without uh either doesn't one. matter yeah it's nope. what yep. it's it tab completion it, that's okay. like the first thing you want to learn with i term is at, like instead of you, you do have to like CD from directory to directory mm -hmm. and move around, but mm -hmm. tab completion is your friend. Just okay. get started on it and hit tab and it'll finish it for you if it can find it. So you can hit enter there and there we go. So now, now we are in our folder. So we want to do a yarn run chain. And it, this is in the instructions. We're going to have three terminals and code and our front end all up <laughs> it's it's like launching a, a rocket but once you have this then you kind of have this nice little tinker environment uh -huh. so there's our chain so what that did is spin up a local blockchain and created cool. a bunch of accounts cool. so now we've got our front end we've got our back end so the last thing to do is sort of wire those things together what we need is another terminal so we need a third terminal and we'll need to cd into your so cd your tab or even probably yo tab right yeah we need a CD into our directory. Yep, hit enter. And then we'll do a yarn run deploy. And that's going to compile and deploy a token to our local. Oh. Oh, yarn, yarn. Yarn. You, you've been earning too much yep. yield. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yarn is now in the vocabulary. Yeah, it is. Really fascinating stuff. It's been fun to. Kind Wait, when, when did we have any ERC token solidity uh, anywhere? We'll get there. We'll get there. First of all, I want to see, I want to see that, that end to end. I want to see that it's working end to end and then we'll, cause it's all, it's all basically set up for you. Uh -huh. Now your environment's all ready to go. So you're going to want to have all three of these terminals. I usually keep them over to the left, it, it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What we need, what we need now is a code editor, right? We need to look at code. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you haven't, you don't have Atom or VS Code, either correct. of those? Uh, that, correct, okay. I do not have those. Uh, I think most people would tell you to use VS Code, but I still use Atom because I'm old. Okay. Uh, but let me, let me send you a link. Basically, we just need a text editor, <laughs> right? But let's use, let's use one that's used for code. Uh, let me send you this. I should basically add this to my requirements too, but 
thankfully we have this cool video here and maybe I can do like a fast forward through it, like catch the important parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no better way to learn than to teach. Right. Oh man. Yeah. That's what we we're talking about doing um, some ZK stuff mm -hmm. and I have not had to do any teaching around ZK. So therefore mm -hmm. I do not understand it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I get it, but until uh -huh. I have to teach it right. and build a tutorial around mm -hmm. it, I don't get it. Like yeah, you don't no, like, you think if you, you want to find it, out but, how much you yes. don't understand something you, you try and teach absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, download this guy and let's get it installed. And this will be our code editor. Code editor. Really? Yeah. Well, okay. So like when you type, so when you write text, right. Or mm -hmm. like when you, when you write an article, you use medium or something to, to mm -hmm. do that. You don't still write it in like WordPad, right? right? You can imagine that developers have also really upped their game in terms of okay. what their interface looks like when they write code mm -hmm. and what it's called is like an IDE the development, interactive development environment. But basically it's okay. like you're, you're, it's like a text editor, but like right. really fancy because it's mm -hmm. like, highlighting all the code differently uh sometimes it's like okay. automatically helping you with your syntax, it's helping you digest sure. it as you write it yep yep and like okay. it'll show your project and things they're just like lots of little plugins and things and and some of them do things differently like where they're actually compiling the code as you're writing it into a different type of code like typescript compiles to javascript so a lot of your environmental things but basically we're just going to use it like a text editor so okay. uh let's see uh if we what I'm worried about is you probably can't run Adam from the command line. Let's see if you, if you go and open up a new I term and type in a T O M, does it do anything? Nope. Does not. Okay. So I bet we have to install, let, let me, I bet it's like in the menus somewhere. Uh, let's see. So Adam application, there's a command palette that is install. I think you hit maybe like open Apple P hold on. Let me, let me just get into it and see. And then, uh, what is it telling me to do? <laughs> so yeah it's still so when you type if you in a new command if you type which adam yes and then hit enter yep that's it shoot okay there's definitely something you have to run in adam dang uh, let me just look it up real quick. I feel like it's important enough that we should have it since we're doing all the little things in this video, mm -hmm. we should have this too for the next person that comes along if this happens. So, so basically we've installed the program, but we want to be able to run it from the command line. So you can be seeding around and be like, Adam, this thing, and it'll open up that code in Adam mm -hmm. from the command line. Mm -hmm. uh, I see what's happening, I think. Oh, weird. Okay, so it wants you to link them, I guess. Gross. There has to be a better way to do this. Oh, here it is. Okay, go up to Adam, like uh, Adam in the menu. And then, yep, install shell commands. That's right there. Darn it. Oops, I should have done that. that. Okay, so go, uh, go to Adam. Yeah, in the very top left in the menu. It's like up in the menu, so the name Adam. Oh, 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 oh right Adam. Apple. Yep, and then install shell commands. Keep going. There it is. Okay. Sound it out. <laughs> oh, Waki said that to me, like right in the middle of a presentation one time in Boulder. <laughs> I was like typing it, but, and I almost did it too. It was terrible. Okay. So now, uh, now you should be able to go ahead and close that, those three atom windows. We don't need that. We'll bring them back up in a different way. This one too? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think we okay. can get rid of that you I mean you can get rid of that window yep okay okay so what we need is to be in our 
um, repo. So I think that there's a that terminal over to the left there could you could CD into your uh, far left, other left, other left, oh, my left, that one. Yep. And then if you CD, so CD into your your directory, your so CD space Y and tab. Or sorry, sorry, <laughs> uh, Y O U R. Remember whatever our project okay. is called. Yeah. Uh, oh, it gives me options. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, y, yeah, uh, yeah, Y O U tab. There you go. Now, yeah. now hit enter. Now, if you just type Adam space dot, it says like bring up my code editor on this folder. Yep. Hit enter. And then, hello, there we go. Okay, okay, so let's close the junk, these tabs that you have open. Let's close those, those tabs. Welcome, welcome guide. Oh, yep, we don't want a welcome guide. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, so okay. over on the left, you've got packages. See that packages folder? Mm -hmm. There's two important packages. There's your Biddler and your React app. Let's get mm -hmm. into Biddler and contracts. And there it is right there. There's your token. So here in Biddler in contracts, we have uh, basically our token that uh, is nothing more than pulling it in from Open Zeppelin. But mm -hmm. I think we should carve that out and maybe write our own for a little bit. Okay. Oh, oh not all of it. Oh, 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 okay. Let's take out just um, go ahead and comment out. So do you know how to do a comment? Yep, It'd be like I two do. little slashy guys, yep. two little slashy guys on line four. We'll take out the Open Zeppelin import. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. We should see this in the front end before we do this, actually. Sorry. Go ahead and we'll, we'll get to this in just a second. Let's not get too excited. Let's, let's get our dev loop solid. What are we, about a half an hour into this? It's not bad, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. How, how are you doing on time? Do we have the hour or something? I have an hour and a half. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That'll be well, plenty. I have, an, I have an hour. I have an hour. We have an hour now. Right. Okay. okay. But like we could probably, if, if this still goes a whole hour, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're about to iterate on a contract. Like we're, uh -huh. we're there. Maybe like deploying to mainnet might be a little bit more, but okay. okay. So let's see. So we've got our code over here on the left. We've got our three terminals. And then the other thing we need is the web browser that's pointed mm -hmm. at localhost. So we need kind okay. of like five things up, three terminals, code and web browser. Okay. And I think it's that tab that says Ethereum app. It's got that little Ethereum, the Ethereum logo. It's a second from the end, I think. I think that's our app right there. So let's go yeah. ahead and close all the other tabs except for that one. Oh, oh, except for that medium article, right? Because it has some good code in it that we'll copy. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. We're getting cleaned up here though. All right. Uh, okay. So we need we did a yarn run chain. We needed you to we need to do another yarn run deploy. It hasn't injected all the way into the front end. So yeah, one of these, I think in the bottom right, you've already done this. You could even close this terminal and use just that this one, one in the corner. This one? Yeah, you can close that one. Yep. And use that one down in the corner and just hit up and hit enter. And it'll, yep, yep. Nice. Okay. So what that does is it compiles your con contract into bytecode. It deploys okay. the bytecode to the local network, and then it injects it into your front end and your front end hot reloads. Okay, cool. Now we need to, last thing we need to do is we need to go to your React app and we're gonna edit your front end and tell it to use the token. So we need to go to our code. Which one here? Yep, yep. Click that guy and then go to your React app source. Yep, uh, source, yep. Is and it then source? App app.jsx. I know it's like way down in, but these are like the two important files. Your contracts are buried way in packages Biddler and uh -huh. your app.jsx is buried way in packages React app source. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's in the readme though, but still. So this, so right there, see that contract where, where it says your contract? We want to change that to your token. So scroll down a little bit. Uh, right there, line 5494. Yep, turn turn that into your token and hit save. Uh, command, command S. Yep, that's it. That is it. And then we should see an auto reload and we want to see our front end now. You kind of want to have it so you can kind of click around. There we go. Mm. Look at that. Okay, so oh, this. Oh, I see what the React app does. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, well, this is just scaffolding. Basically, mm -hmm. the React app is like once you have your token up and you're poking around with it and you're you like, build a little button that lets you move tokens around. And all of a sudden you put like some UI in there and all of a sudden you mm -hmm. have an app, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like basically what you need for an app, but we'll use it for our de development and debugging, right. but we can right. pull out the scaffolding and we've got an app ready to go that we could deploy mm -hmm. to people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what it's doing is it's, let's, let's do it one more time. Go, go into the bottom right there, uh, back to our token deploy. Let's go ahead and just deploy it one more time. Just what it'll do is compile and deploy to our, just hit up and enter again. Yep. Okay. Go. Yep. 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 
Now watch your contract, your, your token. See that 8858? We're going to see that change to... Uh, eight, eight, eight. Oh. Yeah, right there. Yep, in the front end. Okay. We'll see that change, right? There we right. go. So okay. we just deployed okay. so another a new, one. A new ERC-20 changed. token contract yep. that we just yep. deployed on my local blockchain. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, and then your account, your address is that other address up in the top, okay. right? And yep. technically mm -hmm. we could connect MetaMask and stuff like that, but let's not even worry about it. Go ahead and That's copy the was. address though. See that, that copy. Yep. Exactly. Oops, oh, Did my thing do that? Really? Did your thing do that? Uh, no, I clicked this. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that'll take you to either scan. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now in the bottom left, there's a faucet. So, uh -huh. so since we have our local funds, go ahead and paste your address in there and hit send a few times, send yourself a few, a few, Oh yeah. Times. There we go. Send there we me. Go. See it? Mm, give yeah. me. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it feel good? <laughs> yeah. And see your money in the top right start to change. <laughs> this now is this what is life should be like. <laughs> right. Right. This is this is some good insight into the scaffolding. If you go click up there, see the thirteen fifty four. If you mm -hmm. click that, it turns into ETH and back. Mm. These little UI elements are built into this, right? So if mm. you wanted to send some of that, you could click the wallet and it's going to bring up a wallet and you could send stuff around. It's, oh, it's okay. like a, a lot of UI stuff is built in for you. So mm -hmm. if you are building an app, all of that, those components are here for you to, right. to use. This is using okay. real life uh, price data, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Down in the bottom left, you've got the price there. And oh, it yeah. updates oh, yeah. nice. every once in a while. You can even onboard right there. That'll ramp you right in through Coinbase or <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, and it'll wow. send it right to your burner wow. account right there. <laughs> That's cool. That's really <laughs> Which cool. it has a private key in the front end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all about quick iteration and prototyping. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, okay. So, so technically, it. what could we do here? We could uh, we probably can't. Okay. So let's go. Let's okay. Let's go back to the contract. We're ready. Is there any way you could set up your view so we can kind of YouTube? see? Yeah, kind of see basically yeah. all three things in a way where it's, you don't have to see everything at once, but it maybe, I don't know, maybe do some housekeeping here so it's easy to move between the three of these things. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, wait, okay wait, so is this number three? Uh, yeah, that guy's going to be the, where we deploy stuff. And then okay. the other, I mean, the, the only one you don't want to see is the, the dev server. So we will need all three. Of them. Okay, we're good. Let's go look at your token now. So that would be back in the code over to packages, biddler contracts. Okay. You got it. Biddler contracts, got my it. token yep. soul. Yep. Okay. And so what's happening here? We've got a constructor that takes in an initial supply and basically uses inheritance to bring in a whole bunch of other contracts from open Zeppelin and deploy us an ERC 20. But mm -hmm. all we can tell is basically message.sender, which is the person that called the constructor Mm -hmm. gets the entire initial supply sent to them, mm -hmm. I think is what is going on here. So basically we're deploying a token uh, locally and the deployer account owns the whole token. So let's, yep. let's just change want. that. Let's change that to, let's set up our, uh, our dude over in the browser as the, okay. the guy who gets all the, let's replace the message.sender right there with that address. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now let's, this may not work. Let's save that. And then okay. let's go compile and see what happens. So now, now we need a little bit sp more space in the middle of these two windows. Cause we want to click into your, yeah, there you go. Now just hit up and enter. <laughs> you can even do yarn run watch and it will just watch whenever your contract changes and it will try to compile and deploy it. Should I do that? Sure. Oh, can I not do you it can, while it's in yeah, the middle yeah, of stuff? But you're good though. Yarn okay. run watch. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and it, and it deployed that one, a one F up there already, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what did we do? What's different? How do we test it? We should be able to check the balance of, of our account and it should uh -huh. be a shitload, right? So if we go down, okay. there's see balance of there. It's the third form. If we paste in our account and then hit the little, you have to hit a little, that little icon in the bottom, right. To send that form here. Yep. Yep. There we go. Look at that. Cool. Cool. There we go. So, so we're deploying a token to that person as the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's good. Basically we know that our environment is good and we know that we can pull in libraries. Now I think is probably time we should like experiment with the ERC 20 standard to understand it. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So if we, if we go back to our contract and we can go ahead and comment out line four, let's not bring in open Zeppelin. 
Okay. And then, so where it says ER, is ERC 20, we'll pull that out. So it's just going to be, uh, yep. Right there on that line. You can take out the is ERC 20. No, no, oh. we want, we want, yeah, sorry. This is, it's going to be hard to like explain this. I wish we could almost, yeah. Like if we could pair program and I could jump in on your machine, I'm going <laughs> to have to explain it. And it's kind of, right. okay. So let's see. And then, all right, exactly. So what that was is that was inheriting in, Mm -hmm. all the other stuff. We're not inheriting right. it anymore, which means we don't want the stuff after public in seven on line seven. So we can carve that out. Delete. So, you, uh, yeah, no, no, not, not quite. Let's see. It, this would be, you, you need to pull out the ERC 20 stuff. See that ERC 20 and then the parentheses. That's the stuff that we need to pull out. What, what does that Almost, mean? Pull out, uh, delete, delete anything. Yep. Right except for the, the that, that brace right there. That's the stuff that we want. Trash that. Just hit delete. Trash it. Delete. Yep. Yep. I think, and, and then at the parenthesis, there was one parenthesis there that was uh, not that nope. guy. Nope. This guy? That guy. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. So now we have a constructor that takes in an initial supply and calls some mint function that won't work. So we can delete all of line eight. We really should, we should almost be set up so I can be writing some of this code to speed it mm -hmm. up, but this is okay. So now I think if you hit save, it should technically compile. Let's try down to our, yeah, let's try running that. Oh wait, it's okay. already going because we hit save. Could you do a uh, command plus plus a couple times in there so it makes it a little bigger? Yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. So we deployed a token and basically nothing happened because there's nothing there, right? Right. Let's right. add some storage to our contract. So, so let's see about line eight. If you click that little, uh, what is that called? That guy? Yeah. That, if you click that and then hit enter. So we go to a new line, uh, after the brace brace. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's create a string. So type okay. string and it'll be public. So space public. And then space, let's just call it the purpose, the purpose of this smart contract. Uh, or just sorry, just purpose, sorry. <laughs> equals, uh, space equals, and then in quotes, uh, let's just say ERC20 tinkering or something like that, right? We're just testing that we can write something here and then put a um, semicolon at the end of that and hit save. And hopefully we have this new string storage that will show up in the front end with this string in it. So let's see, compile the contracts. Can we, oh, you should hit enter. There we go, there we go. We've got our purpose in the front end though, see that? Cool. Okay, so now we, we, can, we can add storage to our contract. Okay, now let's go to that Medium article and really look at what the guts of an ERC-20. Okay, so first thing, line five there. Do I, do I wanna be in here or in here? Sure. Well, e either one, we can, we've got line numbers here. So we, okay. and we're going to copy them line by line. So look at that okay. line number five. We have a balance of mapping. So mapping is, you can go ahead and paste that in just right below our string purpose. But uh, before line. this bracket? Before that bracket. Yep. That bracket closes a contract off. So you need, yep, exactly. And you might want to do your tabs to make it look nice if you're into that kind of thing. But basically a mapping is just, it's not something that you can look through. You can't mm -hmm. look through all your mappings because you don't know relatively, like you don't know what addresses have hit it. You can look at on-chain data and figure it out. But from a, an outside perspective, a, a mapping is really good for taking, for a mapping. Basically you mm -hmm. have an address and you want to map that to uh, a balance, right? So we're right. mapping an address to an, an, a UNT256, which is a number. Just think of that mm -hmm. like a number. Yep. whenever you see that UN thing. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so we're mapping an address to a number. So anytime we can go ask this contract, what's the number for this address, right? Perfect mm -hmm. for a balance. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, we're mapping the balance. Now let's do something in the constructor. Let's do something weird. So take out the uh, initial supply you went 256. Yeah. So it should yeah. just be everything inside basically. The yep. Yep. But set it up. So it's just open parentheses, close parentheses. Okay. So this constructor runs when the contract gets deployed. So okay. let's get inside the braces of that contract. I think be, it'd be line eight once you hit enter. Yep. Yeah, perfect. And let's do, let's do this. Let's set, so we're gonna grab 
the balance of. So do a tab and then balance of, see that, oh, autocomplete, will it? Yeah, okay. And then um, square braces, so go back. Uh, so it's actually the square braces go to the balance of. So the square braces are going to be, we're going to be getting, yeah. So do square braces and paste your account in. Oopsies. Yeah, paste. Oh, you had it. Yeah. Okay. And then I go and back go here. Grab your account. Oh, yeah. So we're here. just going to like hard code the balance of this guy to like a hundred or something. Just set okay. it e equals a hundred at the end of equals. that. Okay. Yeah. And then semicolon and save. And let's see if that compiles. May or may not. And if you get errors, oh, you want to hit enter. I think we're, we're missing the, no, no, over on the, in the terminal. I think we're missing the latest updates for some reason. There we oh, go. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, and if we make that bigger, I think we may have an error there. Uh, like widen it. Yeah. What is going on? Okay. We may need to scroll up. I don't know. Oh, yarn run deploy. Wait, yarn deploy is what it's doing. Let's, let's hit control C. So let's break out of that. So if you, yeah, there we go. If you just hit yarn, just type yarn run deploy. Let's see what, if something weird is happening here. I feel like my watch script might be doing something goofy. Nope, nope, something is definitely fake. Too many arguments, got it, got it. Okay, uh, back over to our, in, in Biddler, in, yep, our code, back over on our, our Adam. Yep, that, that guy, click. Uh, you've got uh, arguments. See your, your token.args, it's right above your token.salt. Let's just take that out, that, that uh, 1 billion or whatever that is. There's nothing. Yep. 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 Perfect. Just like that. Hit save and then go back over and try another deploy. Basically we were, we took out that, we, we had that initial supply parameter coming in when we deployed mm -hmm. and we took that out and it was still sending it in. Ah, okay, cool. Now we've deployed. Now let's go back over to scaffold ETH and we should have in our front end, we should be able to check our balance and it should be a hundred or whatever we set it to. Right. Let's see. Uh, you'll have to hit the little, uh, yeah, yeah, the little icon there. Boom. Okay, cool, cool. So the, the balance of is basically the storage for the token, and it's keeping mm -hmm. track of how much people have. So, mm -hmm. so if, if we wanted to build, the next function is probably going to be like a transfer function. Yep. W what's that look like? Basically, you, you, you need to adjust the balance of for two different people, right? One mm -hmm. person is going to be calling a, a transfer. Yeah, let's just, copy, let's just copy the whole thing in, and we can kind of just look at the lines. Uh, okay, the whole thing? Nope. Sorry. Sorry. That function. The from the you've got an extra bottom brace there. You don't. You want the bottom brace, but not the two bottom braces. There you go. Oh, oh. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Paste that guy in right below our balance of inside the brace of the contract. Sorry. Pro programming stuff, man. I, I like this. Oof, yep. Doesn't look yep. right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll uh, go up to. So go to. I think you can do edit lines auto indent. You may have to select all of it over there. It may not like the solidity either. I feel like you're not getting any solidity highlighting. We could install that too. Let's see, how does that work? Okay, so go to, go to Adam preferences. And then um, there's an in a packages, yep, packages and type solidity. And we're looking for like some of the solidity. Oh, oh, wait, 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 maybe you need install. Yeah, you need install and then solidity. Packages were the ones that were already installed. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know, whatever the top one is. is Winter it? solidity, looks good. <laughs> right? Press it. <laughs> Press it. Yeah. There's language solidity. I don't know which one of these is going to give us the, the highlighting we needed, but let's just go with the one with the most downloads. Oh, no. I don't know what that means. Oh, no. What have we done? What have we done? Go ahead and close those. Just get that stuff out of there. Uh, maybe 
let's see. If we go back to our smart contract and hit save and reload, let's just see if it, it, says, yeah, it leave has this uninstall button. Yeah, yeah, leave it there for a second. Let's go see okay. if our, anything has changed on our smart contract. So our smart contract, there you go. If you Ooh. hit, yeah, look at that. We got some nice Ooh. highlighting. Okay, so now go to, go up to add a, a go, oh, select all, first of all. So uh, command A gives you everything. And then mm -hmm. go edit lines auto indent and see if that does anything for us. All right. Okay. Nice so, okay. So we installed something that allows us to interpret this better that changed the way the auto indent works to make it work for solidity. And, and that nice highlighting color nice highlight too, color. right? If I you have like something that. wrong, you'll be able to notice it right away now because of that highlighting. And again, like all of this stuff I do in the first day of having a new computer right. and never <laughs> do it again. <laughs> 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 and and other people will tell you there there are better code editors too, right? Like there's a mm -hmm. there's a lot of subjectivity to a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff we're doing. Sure. But sure. okay, now you should now okay now if we hit save, I don't think this is gonna work. Let's maybe comment out the four lines from the transfer function and kind of like work through them a little bit. So let's see, that is at line 13, 14, 15, and 16. Just add some little slashy guys there. Yep. Can I do this? Yeah, command slash? Try command slash. Oh, beautiful. Look yeah. at this guy. You're you're a knack. You're a programmer. <laughs> I don't, I'm I'm turning off. You got it. Okay. So we've got transfer ready to go. I think if we hit save, it would basically create a contract that anybody could call this transfer function. Okay. So what what does the transfer actually need to do, right? So if if, mm -hmm. if I transfer to you or you transfer to, let's let's say you transfer to me, mm -hmm. it needs to decrement yours by the amount right? Your balance, right? If, if all we're doing is keeping track of this balance and this balance is the key thing. If you want to transfer, we need to take some out of yours and put it into mine, right? So yep. that's what that would do. But we would need some, you would need to check things. And that's what those require statements are there first. But let's, let's do it without the require statement. So maybe okay. just uh, let's, let's uncomment the last two lines. I don't even know how this is going to work. Are you gonna do some magic here? Uh, no. I think you just have to pull that. The there's like a slash star at the end of that. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, pull that to the other lines. Yeah, it's it's a star slash is what you need right there. Perfect. You got it. Star yeah, slash. Star slash. Yeah. All right. Cool. cool. So we're not gonna check anything. We're not gonna require anything. We're just going to if if you say transfer, we're gonna take it out of yours and we're gonna give it to the other guy. Now, okay. you can imagine that if I don't have any, it's just going to give me a negative number, but we don't have negative numbers. So we'll, we'll have what's called overflow, but okay. we can talk about that in a second. But uh, let's go ahead and save. And so back over, let's, let's go ahead and deploy this thing. Let's compile and deploy it and see how it looks. So yarn run deploy. What are we at, 856? We almost have a working token. All right. But more importantly, you've got like an environment that you can always mm -hmm. mess with this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so mm -hmm. now we have a transfer function. Okay, and mm -hmm. so let's check, let's check the balance of, um, let's see. Uh, oh, here's what we'll do. We need a new incognito window. Can you open up an incognito window going to localhost? Nice. 3000. Okay, yep, yep. Enter. Yep and then kind of hold that guy off to the side and we'll see that it's a different account. See that 4B1E? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sending okay. it to myself. That's what we're about to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So go ahead and copy that guy's address and get his balance. So let's do the balance here. of him uh, up, up, up to balance of. We want to, yep, and then hit enter. Should be zero, right? Cool. Then let's check our balance. What's our balance? Should be 100. It's not. Uh, the oh, little there, I, it there it is. Yeah, that little icon is just touchy. It pisses yeah, me right, off every time, right. especially like when I'm doing a live demo, I'm trying to do it fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's, we have 100 and mm -hmm. he has zero. Let's mm -hmm. send him some, right? Okay. Let's, let's send him 50 or 25 or something like okay. that, right? So, so two would, uh, nope, oh. that's the contract address. Oh, okay. And don't worry, that quorum is, just go ahead and hit reload. Basically. Uh, uh, refresh, command R. Yep, yep. yep. Rick Rickmu is being clever about how he's talking to the chains, and in the background, Ethers JS is talking to Infura and a couple other mainnet chains to do ENS and also get you that price in the bottom left and some other things. And 
if it doesn't have a quorum, basically if one of the chains gets out of sync, he throws that error and breaks mm -hmm. the entire app. <laughs> but I don't even care if the thing has a quorum. Okay. Yep. What, cool. what are we doing here? Did I you said, set I all said, 100? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So now let's try sending like 10 more. Okay. From our account to, to his account. Okay, now go check our balance and see what happens. So he, he should get his 10, right? But what happens to our balance? It's gonna be a giant number. All right, Okay. what the heck just happened? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to understand, right? All right, so let's go back to our contract to explain overflow. Instead of having a uint 256, so I think the balance of function is what we're looking at. Basically anywhere you see uint 256, I think there's two places. Let's change it to a uint eight. So instead of using 256 bits, we're gonna use eight bits, uh, bytes, bytes, eight, wait, eight bytes, I think, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's bytes, yep, okay, so hit save. So the maximum number that this can be is what you saw down there, a gigantic number. The mm -hmm. maximum number a uh, UN8 can be is only 255. Okay. So, so basically, we can't do uh, decimals, so we're gonna talk about that in a second, but also we can't do negative numbers. So okay. we can go from zero to 255. And mm -hmm. once you get to 255, if you add one, it goes back to zero. Okay. So if you have zero and you subtract one, it's actually going to take you all the way back around to 255. Does okay. that make sense? Am I explaining you, that right? Yes, but also it okay. doesn't make sense because that's not how tokens work. But I see how the, this token works that way. Right, right. Well, technically, that is how tokens work. But right, right, right. We right. do, we do that's something not, that's different. Not, uh, right. Common sense for how, right. how tokens work. Right. So you have the ten to the eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. That's what. That's how tokens work in on Ethereum. So mm -hmm. what we do. So so right now we're just minting a hundred, right? If that was a hundred dollars and mm -hmm. you needed to send two cents, that would be impossible, mm -hmm. right? The the smallest amount we can move is basically one way and we're sending a mm -hmm. hundred way right now. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. think of one ETH, that's like 10 to the 18. Right. There's yeah. the right. 18 mm -hmm. zeros at the end, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that means that that's how we do decimals. You, right. you take whatever number it is with a whole bunch of zeros and you move it out to 18 and maybe it's 0 0.001 at that point, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives us 18 decimals or something like that, which we would never use. But now we, now we have that within that uh, UNT256 space. So okay. let's see, let's just look at the UNT8 real quick. Did we, it, Did we save? I don't think, I think it failed to compile. I think something happened in the compiler because... Uh, I'm, gonna Nick, I'm gonna kill this. I'm gonna yeah, kill this. Yeah, you can get rid of that. Yep, yep. Wait, it's publishing? Why is it our front? Okay, what's a contract? Two two zero C. Go back over to your front end now and hit reload and see if we have that new contract. Oh. Wait. It's like the okay, so let's check our balance. Yep. Okay, no, something's not right. It's not deploying. What's going on here? Let's go look at our... Try to yarn deploy? Yeah, yarn run deploy. One more time. That's what, and it, and it re-injects everything, and gives you a brand new contract. We should, our, our balance should go back to zero. Okay. And our front end should reload. There we go. We just needed to do a fresh one of those. Now, if we check our balance, it should be back to, yeah, I just hit reload. We'll, we'll fix that issue soon. Okay, now we're back to 100. So okay. now- um, Incognito? No, no, no. We can, we can transfer to anyone from anyone, right? So you mm -hmm. can just go to the transfer button uh, okay. and send, let's see, two would be from us. Let's send- Let's send it to the contract itself. That'll work just to see that. So send 255 to this guy and hit send. Okay, and then let's go look at his balance. It should be 255, right? Uh, balance of, yep, you paste his address in there, yep. Uh, hit that little icon. The whole button doesn't work, you gotta hit, there we go. Okay, so now let's oh. send this guy, <laughs> let's send this guy one, right? Uh, so right. down in the transfer, oh. no, yep. So what's, what's it gonna go to? <laughs> you tell me ahead of this if we send this if he has 255 right now and it's a un8 uh -huh. and we send one to him 
Is what's the next zero? value going to be? It's going to be zero. Yep. It should roll over. And that's just why well, I just wanted to demonstrate overflow. Right. Okay. okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And now decimals, right? Now we probably mm -hmm. need to start thinking of everything as 10 to the 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, let's, let's do, let's leave it in small numbers and let's, let's make sure the require stuff works. So let's, okay. let's go ahead and uncomment the requires of the transfer. And let's get to actually having a full token. There we go. And then if you hit save there, let's see if it compiles. You'll want to look back at your console. Oh, no, just hit up and enter. Yeah. It's, I like doing it this way anyways. I don't like the watcher. I like this when I can see the colors mm -hmm. and it's. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at the code real quick before we even mess around with it in the front end. What we've added is line 13 and 14. And these are require statements. If, if a require statement isn't true, everything unrolls, un, un, rolls, right? It's not like right. it just fails there and stops. It's an atomic transaction. You kind of right. know the nature of blockchain. So you yeah. get all this stuff, but basically it, has it unravels to, it has anything, right. Right. right? Even if like a contract called a contract, called a contract, called this contract calling transfer and something happened the third way in, if this require statement isn't right, it's going to unroll all of that stuff and right. set the blockchain back to what it was. And okay, you're going to pay so, for the gas. And you're going to pay for that gas. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So let's see. Um, what what are we requiring? We're requiring that the person calling the transfer, so that, see that message dot sender? Mm -hmm. That's basically the person who signed the transaction. The person right. who so it's saying who like this person's to, a transfer and they're trying to send some and it has to be greater than the amount that they have. Yep, exactly. We're, we're making sure that the guy who's sending the transaction has a balance greater than the value he wants to send. And then on the next mm -hmm. page, we're making sure, or the next require, ooh, this is a weird one. So we're requiring that the balance of the person we're sending it to plus the value we're adding is greater than or equal to his balance before we added to it. Now that's a son of a gun, <laughs> but it's after explaining overflow that maybe should make sense. But okay. what's happening there is it's saying, if we take the two balance, Mm -hmm. and we add to it, it okay. should be bigger. Kind right. of like when we had the 255 and we added one to it, right. it would be 255 that would plus one should be 256. But okay. if it rolls over, this guy fails. So okay. this, is, this, is our, this is our defense against that, that overflow. Okay. But man, that line is hard to parse, <laughs> right? But right. there we go. So now, 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 we're, now we're set up here. We've got, we're we're making sure that the sender has the funds to send. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that it's not going to overflow if we do it. And then we're subtracting from one guy and adding to the other guy. Mm -hmm. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. So now we basically, this is, this is the, the guts of an ERC 20 token. Mm -hmm. You've got, you can get uh, the balance and you could do a transfer. Uh, I think the, the next thing they added to the standard was uh, an approval where uh, yeah. mm -hmm. you can approve someone and then uh, that approved person can then transfer on your behalf. And that, that just gets more complicated. I mean, you, I don't even know if you'll find it in here, but right. uh, at that point, we just usually start bringing in open Zeppelin and uh, right. okay. let me, let me, let me add one thing before we go uh, any farther. And so, so let's see uh, line, let's go line 16. If you hit enter on the end of line 16 and add one more thing to this transfer. Ooh, that's going to mess with your comment though. Shoot. Sorry. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Leave that comment there, but get us another line inside that function. Okay. So what we want to do is a console log. So if you type console.log, now to a programmer, uh, this is really awesome because it's a console log is a way in JavaScript to get a printing of what's going on. It prints out like you have a variable, you think it's doing what it's doing, but for some reason it's not. I'm going to console log this variable to see what the heck is going on. That's a, that's a JavaScript thing, but Fiddler has brought that into Solidity. Mm -hmm. So now when you're like lost in solidity, trying to figure out what the heck is going on, you've got this nice console log. So let's create a console log and then in parentheses, it's a function that we'll call. So console log parentheses. Yep. Yep. And then do um, message.sender. Uh, MSG. Sorry. Yeah. 
dot sender. Dot sender. So that would be the address of the caller and then do a comma. And then in quotes, we're gonna, we're gonna say uh, sent and then close that guy off. Uh, yeah, and then do a con, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Explaining uh, mm -hmm. after the quote, let's do another comma and let's do message uh, underscore value will work, I think. And then go ahead and close that parenthesis and do a semicolon. And you kind of want the console log to line up with the other things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mm -hmm. ugly. Yeah. Oops. Now, if we save and deploy that, does that compile? Let's see. Up and enter. That's the one. Okay, rad. So uh, now go ahead and just real quick in the front end, let's do a transfer. Just send from one to another. And it's going to have to be legal. So you'll have to send less than, yeah, send that guy like one, right? You should, you should have 100. So you should be good. Yeah. So if you send him one, that should go through. Now go look at your blockchain though. So go, uh, so go to your, your uh, uh, sorry, the, there we go, right there. Now, if you scroll up a little bit, right there, right there, console log, look at that. The address sent one, see it right there under your, mm -hmm. so, so when you're debugging, this is a really nice thing you can do is you can add some console logging right into ah. your contract and get some feedback okay. when that transaction happens. Console log. Here's the yep. address. That's message sender. Sent yep. is whatever I wrote there. Value is what I sent. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. So now we could just use this contract, but we probably should go back to inheriting open Zeppelin. Open Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah. So basically just go back to your code and just hit open Apple or hit command Z a whole bunch. Let's just like, just hold it down. Yeah, this is also a fun thing as a programmer. You get to see yourself speed program in reverse. <sighs> see yourself destroy all your- There we go. Okay, so let's hit save now. And okay. we're calling it, okay. So now it's bringing in an ERC20 and it's setting the name and the symbol, see that? So you could mm -hmm. basically just edit your symbol if you want. Uh, but yeah, whatever we want there and hit save. Now, if you wanted to add extra stuff, go ahead and do the compile and let's make sure it pushes back to the front end fine and everything compiles. Oh, we're going to need to set the, um, the args. So if you go back to your code and go to, yep, exactly. Put in like a million in there or something like that. Uh, that was, um, that was a million. Okay, cool. Is that a million? I, I don't know. <laughs> you could also do, um, here, yeah, here's a trick. Go back to that. So do, go to your token again. Yeah, go to the args. Yeah, just do one. Just do the number one. And then do a little star, shift eight. And then a 10. And then two stars. And then 18. So that's one times 10 to the 18. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. The two yep. stars does your exponent. Okay, okay so now cool. hit save and let's see if that all pushes. So now we should be technically uh, compiling and deploying our own open Zeppelin token. Okay, what are we missing? Expected at one. Okay, so it's still getting zero for the count. Did we not save the args? Oh, oh, wait, no, we're passing it in right there. Missing argument. Constructor, Could, did, are you sure you saved that? I think so. Hmm. Darn it. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Maybe we're not passing it in. Did we undo all the way? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know why it's not. Let's see. You sure you saved args? Yeah, that's saved. Maybe I didn't save this? Maybe, I don't know. You could try it, but I don't, let's, we could just take out the initial supply and just put it right in the contract too and not even send it in as an arg. Let's, let's try that, yeah, yeah. So, so go back to turning args into just the square braces with nothing in them. Maybe it didn't like that fancy math we did there. Hit save there, so that is just empty. And then go back to your contract. That won't work. And then, then see where it's taking in initial supply into the constructor. Pull that, so line seven, just take everything out of the parentheses there so we're not passing anything in. Yep, okay. and Save. then 
uh, yeah, so we need to do, we need to put a number for initial supply. Just put it to 100 right now and then we'll uh, line eight. Yeah, how much we meant to that person in the beginning. Perfect, perfect. All right, now let's try compiling that. Just like as a sanity check, let's make sure we have this much working. Cool. Okay, cool. So now over to our front end, we should have deployed a new token and there's going to be a whole crap load of different things you can do mm, to this token, right? Right. So, right. So all that stuff comes just out of the box from mm -hmm. uh, the Open Zeppelin uh, right. library. And these are just like standard things. So mm -hmm. maybe we could look at the transfer from real quick if we wanted to. Where was that? There's a there's an approve and a transfer from. Yeah, so a transfer from is just like a transfer except for there's a from. Mm -hmm. So I can I can say I want to move 100 of David's tokens. And the reason why I can do this is David has called approve, right? So if you scroll up, there's an approve function. Boom, right there. So you could put in someone else's address. That would be, you're, you're mm. basically approving yourself there, right? Right, But yep. like we, you could if you, were, if you wanted to, and we're probably short on time, but if you had an incognito window, you could have an address, you could approve mm -hmm. it here, and then you could send it some. Always remember that you need to have gas to be doing this too. So whatever account right. is calling all these things, right. you may have to give the other one permission. Okay, right. so we've got a contract, we can iterate on it. Um, Let's deploy it to production. Is okay. that basically the next kind of piece here? You mean on um, the mainnet? No, well, we can where we want. Maybe we can, maybe X die. I, I need to test test okay. something on that. Let's do let's do Rankin B. Okay. Have you done? Okay, so here's what we no, no no leave leave that stuff there. I don't think we want to mess with that stuff. What we want to do is go over to Biddler. So go look at our code again. So over uh, on the right. Yep, code on the right. Yep. So there is this biddler.config.js. That's about three, three file uh, up, 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 down, 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 right there. Up, 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 right there. There we go. Okay, so this crazy file is sort of um, all the tasks that I've built, but they will help you deploy to whatever network you want. So if you scroll mm -hmm. down, I should have put the network stuff at the top, but for some reason it's at the bottom. So we can see we're selecting localhost as our default network. So this is this is pretty heady, dorky stuff. I get that this isn't super uh, mm -hmm. approachable, right? But this is this is basically what network we're pointed to with Biddler. Okay. We're currently pointed at localhost. So what we could do is point it at uh, another network. Like you could type in mainnet there for default network on 170. But the problem is that with either of these, I think that Infura code is broken. Let's just try xdi while it's here. So if you just okay. type in xdi there, yep, and then hit save. Now over to, okay, now we have to have a talk about accounts. So when you're doing a local deploy, you have mm -hmm. a local node up and you have a private key and it's being deployed like for you by someone over there, right? Like someone like the, the zero, the zero account of the Biddler chain is taking care of the deployments for you, but there is no like zero account for us. Uh, kind of the difference between a provider that's giving us a connection and a signer that can actually sign mm -hmm. uh, transactions. So what mm -hmm. we need to do now that we're connected to a network that doesn't have one for us, we need to create one. So mm -hmm. if you go back to your command prompt, uh, uh, the Man middle, problem. the middle command, the the terminal, terminal. That's what I want. And do a yarn run generate. Generate. This is going to generate a, and your private key is going to show up here on screen for everyone. It's going <gasps> to generate an account. Now, if you do yarn run account, we're going to be able to see that account. Ooh. Okay. And it's probably going to tell us, oh. Uh, if you scroll up to that QR code, it's probably going to tell it. Uh, leave it on that QR code for a second, and I'll send you some uh, X die. There we go. Okay, so if you scroll down, though, you should see that we have a zero balance on X die right there. See that balance? Yep. So I'm going to send you 25 cents, and that's enough to deploy thousands of contracts. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So now if you hit up again, now your account uh, should be funded on XDI and you should be ready to deploy. There we go, 25 cents. Cool. Okay, let's try yarn run deploy. Let's fire this thing off. I have no idea if this is gonna work. <laughs> 
it's going to take a little bit longer right here, right? It should take about five right. seconds. There we go. Token deployed to, all right. So copy that address right there, that 07. Copy that and then uh, go to your browser and go to blockscout.com. So it's like Etherscan, but for XDAI. XDAI. And let's paste in this transaction. So we just paid real money to put a real contract on a real EVM compatible network. Little, a little cheaper than, than mm -hmm. mainnet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But technically you could, ooh, let's, let's do something. How much time do we have? About 10 minutes? Oof, might be a little tight, but let's try something. So let's do, but basically it's there, right? We just went mm -hmm. to a disinterested third party and that third party says, yes, you have a token available. Okay, let's go back to our yourtoken.soul. Yep, okay, let's create a new function after the constructor close yeah right there yep hit enter a few times yeah just give us some all right let's call this function i don't even know but let's call it plant like we're, we're thinking yield farming right let's yep. so we're going to type function space sorry so you want to get rid of plant sorry function space and then plant we'll name our function and then in parentheses it needs to take in a you went 256 amount, maybe? Uh, no, 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 let's not even do that. Get rid of that, get, get that out of there. Okay, so uh, parentheses, we do, we do need the parentheses and we'll go ahead and do right arrow. And really this is like, you're, you'll have to kind of like read the Solidity docs and tinker around. If you're gonna mm -hmm. write Solidity, like the, it's gonna take some time to learn the language a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just hit right arrow a couple of times, uh, sorry. Right, 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 right. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 there we go. Okay, then then we want to do a space and make it public and do another space and uh, do payable. Yeah, and then do your braces like it's an open function. So oh, left brace, right brace. Yeah, and then hit enter. I, I'm worried about those parentheses down there after plant. I feel like the parentheses need to be next to plant because we're it's a function. Yep. Yep. There we go. Now, can we do a yarn? Uh, since we're already attached to XDI, we don't want to deploy. Just do a okay. yarn run compile. I mean, we could. It costs a penny and it doesn't matter. But let's just make sure. Let's see if we can. Uh, yeah, that's right. Let's make sure we can compile without deploying. Okay, we're good. Okay, so back over to our function. All right. So we made, let's go inside the braces now. So that payable, uh, those are parentheses, the braces oh, at the end. Yeah, 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 you got it. So now what's going on with this function is we're allowing people to send ETH in. That's what that okay. payable is, okay? okay. So <laughs> let's hit enter and let's, let's say, what should we do? We should basically, let's mint them an amount of tokens that they sent in the value. Yeah, this is easy, this is easy. Okay, underscore mint and then open parentheses, message.sender, comma, message.value. I can't believe it's gonna be this easy, but this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> and then uh, you close it with a semicolon. Okay, so you can see that in the constructor, when we deploy this contract, you're minting 21 of them to yourself for some yep. reason. Mm -hmm. But it's then be 21 million, but I can't, couldn't figure out the number. Not even, guess. not even million. Yeah. That's 21, yeah. 21. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. 21. Let's try the times 10 to the 18 right here. Okay. Uh, so, so that is at, so star, star 10 star, star 18. And that's, that's a million. I think so. Yeah. Star you're, you've oh, got no, that's... 21 star zero. Yeah. So it's actually zero. Oh, right 10. Now. Yep. There we go. Okay. Let's, let's compile that and see if it works. So not only are you starting out with 21, you're allowing anyone to call this plant function and mm -hmm. send in some value and they will be able to deposit. Okay, we're good. Yarn run deploy, ship it, freaking ship it. <laughs> to a live network. Okay, now, now I want you to go to your front end, that Ethereum app. And this is going to be our contract on XDAI that we can go talk to. Okay. Uh, but we'll have to go over to the app.jsx real quick. Um, app .jsx. Over, in your, over in your code, there's a tab called app.jsx. This would be your front end. Yep, that one right there. 
And uh, if we scroll, let's see, we're looking for local provider. I see provide, uh, user provider. Let's see, scroll up a little bit. Uh, keep going, keep going. We're almost there. Right up a little bit farther right there. That local chain provider. Yeah, okay. So I guess we could just set a React variable. I don't want to do that. I'm lazy. Okay, so look on line 29 where it says new JSON RPC provider. Basically what we want is JSON RPC provider, open parentheses, and then in quotes, we want to do uh, H, uh, like a, an address. So yeah, HTTPS colon slash slash die dot POA dot network. Oh, okay. Uh, D -A -I oh, sorry, what was that? Yeah, I Dot POA dot network. So instead of talking to mainnet or Rinkaby, we're going to go talk to XDI also. And then you can delete all the stuff on like the next two lines as long as you close your parentheses and close your, I think it's just a closed parenthesis. That's probably it right there. If you hit save, let's see if this works. Okay. Your app should reload. And then let's go check your balance on, oh no, unsupported network, get address. Oh no, that's not going to work. Oh no. Yeah, so there's like a push that I need to do to change this to get this to work on XDI and this new. Uh -huh. Okay, so go ahead and undo that stuff. That's, I was hoping that you could deploy the app and I could go deposit some funds into it, but that's not going to work in time. Okay. So let's let's actually even shit. We could let me think of how we could do this quickly. That's not going to work because of that. Oh, oh. Uh okay, okay. I think I think I got it. I think I got it. So did you leave is that still there? What? I think you did like, did you undo? You actually okay. redo. Yeah, so shift command. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's get it all back in there. Okay, uh, then grab, then scroll down and grab the user provider uh, right there on line 45. Copy user provider right there, yep. Copy that and paste it. The line, the whole line? line? Uh, no, no, just the user provider, the word user provider. Sorry, okay. this is a weird stuff. Then scroll down and go to uh, where we put it into the contract right there. There's a provider on line 92, where you are for the, your token. There's a provider, paste it in right there. Oh, it is user provider. No. <laughs> We're just gonna have to fix it. I'm gonna have to fix that in another way. Okay. So going, so there's this weird thing with Scaffold ETH where I set it up to be all providers and you need signers and providers. I didn't understand how Ether's JS worked mm -hmm. uh, enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shoot, what could we do? Let's let's go back to Biddler config. So over on your code, the config, that thing. Let's change our network back to localhost instead uh, of deploying. Okay. I was thinking you could deploy to XDI and you could deploy a site and I could go to your DAP and deposit some funds into your token. Uh, you can you just do localhost. It's the name, not the yeah, yep. Keep going. Right, there. Delete yep. This. yep, yep, exactly. Yep. Hit save there. And then let's go back to our token and save our token. Okay, and then do uh, like a yarn run deploy in our command. And hopefully it just deploys things locally and injects our front end back in a happy way. Oh, we, I think we need to undo the app changes in the front end so it's not talking to XDI. Uh, here? Yeah. I think we changed that. Did, did we, we undo it back? I don't, th I think we redid it. Yeah, yeah, do, do an undo again, sorry. Undo back to just talking to localhost and then you can still iterate locally. Not doing my undo for me. Okay, where is it? Uh, oh no. Okay, uh, do this, do this. So uh, go back to your, your uh, console and we one? can just, yep, yep, do a git. So GIT space checkout. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Space and then type packages slash react and then hit tab. It should, it should auto complete source SRC tab. And then uh, this is app. Uh, so app dot uh, capital A. Good Lord. Sorry, man. This is. Dot, so what we're, uh, yeah, hit dot JSX, I think. Does it tab complete? And then hit enter. Basically what we're going to go do is go get, so since I have it in Git and version control, you just went mm -hmm. and grabbed my version, a fresh right. version. Right. So if okay. you go click back to your tab, it should be reset. Okay. Okay. And then that should have deployed to the front end, right? So now we should yeah. have your token. Now there should be, 
Ooh, let's do a yarn run deploy again. I feel like it. I'm not sure if it did deploy locally or not. And it should inject and our app should reload. Okay, there we go. I'm feeling better about it. Uh, oh, your, it's your token, not your contract. Remember that, that one change we made over on the right mm. uh, there, the line 94 or whatever, that your contract, it should be your token because we changed the name of our contract. There we go. Now that should work in the front end. Okay, now do we see it? Okay, maybe in the last minute we should like reiterate how to like bring this back up on your machine. Like maybe yes. we destroy yeah. everything and bring it back up. Okay, okay. so quit, quit uh, everything. Yeah, yep. Go ahead and close. Uh, basically, w, command W, command W. Yep, yep, yep. Don't uh, save. Yeah, save that guy. We need that one. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now it, uh, all the instructions are at that link, but we only need to do a few of them. Let me send you that link again. Let's see, in our chat, it's this token dev one, right? So that's the branch we're working out of. You have it pulled down locally. Uh, the instruction should be, if you scroll down, right there, right? So we don't need to clone. So basically starting with the second command where we CD in, that's basically what you need to do, right? So go ahead and open a terminal and, and get into your, your token. Uh, sorry, you want, probably want to use iTerm too. Oh, right, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so now this is on my other screen. Shit, do you have a call right now too? Is this gonna mess with stuff? Like we I have, should, we should I, drop it's it in 30 minutes, I just, I just have, okay. Like, okay. I need yeah, to prepare for take it. Take a break, no, I totally understand, yeah. Okay, let's, get, let's do it real quick then. Okay, so okay. CD into your directory, yep. And then do an atom dot, and that will open up your code editor. Let, should yep. we even maybe make some notes? Let, let's see. Wait, did that work? Uh, atom, atom space dot, I'm sorry. Dot means, dot means this directory. Okay. Didn't like it. What? Wait, didn't we install that? Something, something's weird here. That ZSH doesn't look right either. Close, close, close I term too. Just close that hole, like quit out of that thing. Yeah. And then maybe bring up iTerm again. I feel like there's something weird with the initialization of iTerm too. Okay. There we go. No, no it still says ZSH. Hmm. Okay, so can we CD into our, our token sandbox real quick? So, something's not right here, but let's see. We may have to, do, it should tab complete, always tab complete, because then you know you right. got it right. Uh, Okay, and then atom space dot, it's not gonna work. It's it's like, if it didn't work the first time, it's not gonna work this time. Okay, so you may have to bring up atom again and try that install thing. Dang it. Let's let's run through that real quick. Can you open up atom? So yeah, command space. Uh, how do I find it? Uh, just do command space atom, right? Bring it up in. Command space. Yep, atom. Spotlight, oh, right. that's what it's called, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so then, sorry, this is running over a little time. Uh, God, we should probably uninstall that stupid package that we, <laughs> yeah, get rid of that thing. That's just an annoying message. Uh, okay. Let's see. Gone. So go, go up to file and do the install command thing again. So we have it, or uh, Adam, sorry, not file. Install shell commands. I don't know, like we did it once. Okay, now, now if you, close the iTerm and open up a new iTerm. Tell me that that is there. Yep. I think we have to close the window though. Yeah, now bring up an iTerm. But we did this once and it, it sh this should stick and I don't know why it's not. Okay, um, okay, CD your, your to oh wait. Yeah. Oh wait, no. C yeah, CD into your, yep, yep. And I know this is complicated and there's a lot of mess, but we're so close to having like a great environment where you can, I feel like maybe just like one other iteration, maybe we Adam can, dot? Yeah, try, yeah, let's try it. Let's see if this works. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> Add to this window and discard state. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so now we've got our code up. Okay. So now there's a few commands you need to run. You don't need to run the yarn install, but you'll mm -hmm. need to run the yarn start. 
Okay. Do, do you want to, should we, should we destroy them all again and bring them back again? No, I got it. Okay. Plus okay. we have this on video. Okay. Yarn start will bring, uh, we'll start the front end and then we need a new command. So just open Apple in or command in old school. Open, open Apple and what is that? It, that's command. We, we used to call it open Apple back in the nineties oh, okay. when we were using oh, yeah. Macs because <laughs> it was an open Apple and a closed Apple. You had that mm, on the keyboard mm -hmm. probably goes back to like the Mac SE or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, yarn run chain. So we've got our app. Now we've got our chain. Whoa. Oh, sorry. You got a CD into your directory. Yeah. Each time you need to, I have iTerm set up. So when I open a new window, it opens it in whatever the last one was. But yeah, you'll need to CD into your directory, then yarn run chain. And then one more terminal, CD into your directory, yarn run deploy. And this is, you need these five things basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've got three terminals, your front end, your compiler chain, and your like deployer, right? Okay. And then you've got that on the left, really you've got your app. Yep. And on the right, you've got your smart contract. It's in packages, Biddler. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. And so this is yeah. where I go. And so I would, hmm, how would I do this on mainnet? So we just, where we put in XDI, we just put uh -huh. in mainnet, right? Okay. Down. Okay. So go packages, Biddler, and that Biddler config right there is how we pointed it at. Biddler config. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I come down here and instead yep. of doing local host, I yep. you would do mainnet and you'd mainnet. want to send, you'd need to send that account. So I sent your account some XDI, you'll want to send it some mainnet ETH right. and you'll want your, that Infura ID, you'll probably want to create a new Infura ID. You can't okay. talk to mainnet with my old Infura ID because it doesn't work very often. Okay, okay. So, but so again, I need my own Infura. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. To be able to okay. talk to, or your, or your own node. You probably have a local node running. You could just point it at the. No, I actually, actually don't. <laughs> you <laughs> <your> brownie. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Sorry to take some extra no, this time. Is great. This, this has is been great. fun. I think that we're close enough that like, like hit me up, like ask questions when you run uh -huh. into things, like don't, don't let this go stale, get, poke at it and let me know where you get stuck and let's iterate a little bit. Cause I think we're uh -huh. like 80% of the way to you having a great local environment where you could do stuff, but there's just like these little gotchas that, that come along the way with it. So, so just like keep, my, keep my next steps is yep. to get into open Zeppelin, get a token, an ERC token contract, twink, tinker with it. So it, it's what I want it to be. Hit yep. yarn, run, deploy, connect. To you, you should, yeah, you should work it locally first, yeah. right? Just, just yeah, right. do everything locally here. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the token working locally, let's just do another quick session. I'll help you deploy it to mainnet. Okay, is cool. That cool. Awesome. Yes, awesome. That's, that's great. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. Perfect. Awesome. This has been fun.